That's good. All right, so I've got six o'clock. Please silence your cell phones, etc. So at six o'clock, I call this meeting to second on city council order. Please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state. Thank you. Please be seated. That's why I don't listen to you. I know. I cover my ear. <laughs> All right. Item number two is the invocation. For that, our friend, Reverend Dennis. How are you, sir? I'm all right. How are you? Thank you for letting me be here. I apologize for the voice. I breathed smoke yesterday. You know, that stuff that's floating around in the air. Apparently, my voice didn't like it. But anyway, I am glad to be here. I thank you for the opportunity. Let's pray. Our gracious Father, we do want to come today, first of all, to say thank you. Lord, you give us another day. It uh, wasn't as hot as it could have been. We thank you for that. And Lord, we just thank you for life itself, the privilege of, of enjoying this planet, what you, the city, the, the country, the nation you put us in. Lord, this evening, we come also to say thank you for this young officer that's starting out with Saginaw. We just ask that you would watch over him and protect him and all of our officers as they serve. Lord, we lift up uh, Eddie Woods to you, the fireman that uh, we just found out has a brain tumor. Lord, we don't understand why these things happen, but we do know that you're a great and awesome God and loving God, and we also know, Lord, that you can heal. I'm asking for a miracle. I'm asking that you would heal him. And I'm asking that you would do it in a way that nobody can question that, except that it came from you. Because, Father, we want you to get the glory. But we also want to see this young man be spared. If that's your will, we ask for it. And, Lord, we also ask that this evening, as we uh, gather here, that you would be in our midst, that you would watch over this group, that you would guide them in all that they do. More than anything, Father, we ask that you would bless them. We all need blessings, and I especially ask for them. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Hey, Reverend. Item number three is audience participation. So if there is an item on the agenda you wish to speak about, please see the city secretary and fill out a form, one of these little forms. You're allowed to speak on any posted item. Moving forward through the consent agenda. Uh, I've had a request to pull item C and item E. So we will discuss A, action regarding minutes of August 16th, B, action regarding purchase of one 2021 chassis mount animal control unit for animal services, uh, and D, action regarding resolution 2021 annual approval of investment policy. Any questions on those, on A, B, and D? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Mayor, I make a motion that we approve items A, B, and D on the agenda as presented. Charlie second. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed. Let the record reflect we do have a quorum tonight. Uh, Councilmember Lawson uh, had a death in the family. Uh, item, so let's go to item C. So C is action regarding purchase of festive trumpet with lights, stars, happy holiday decoration. Rick. Thank you, Mayor, Council. This morning I took some grief over my title of this item, but. Uh, this is something that we do annually. We, uh, we uh, order Christmas decorations for uh, generally found in Willow Creek Park. And so uh, this is a joint collaboration between the Beautification Committee and the Park Board. Have committed funds from both of their funds to pay for this purchase. It's a little larger purchase than we have had in the past, but uh, it is a large display. And, and uh, anyway, if you have any questions, I'll try to answer those. Council questions? Cindy? I do. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you guys, as well as the Beautification Committee, or Keep <coughs> Saginaw Beautiful Committee, and the Parks and Recreation Board. Um, Saginaw is quickly becoming one of those places where people want to come to look for Christmas lights, and it's just yeah. wonderful to be able to bring that, um, that type of activity here. Um, I do have a question about uh, the funding for this uh, 
display. Uh, you have the minutes from the Park and Recreation Advisory Board. Yes, ma'am. That show that they approve it, but you do not have the minutes included here for the Beautification Committee. Those were agreed to in a workshop, and, and uh, I don't know that we've ever provided minutes from the workshop that where uh, they have decided to, to fund uh, their share. So I don't know, do you have minutes for, yeah, so not, not something that we have typically done. Well, it would be nice for us to see proof of that. You, you want to speak? No, you want. She turned in the form, so she gets yeah. to speak. So, <laughs> Ms. Stewart, Kelly please. Stewart, part of the Beautification Committee, and we did meet together, and we spent a little over an hour doing this, and it was unanimous. Okay. That, uh, but I, I, it, I read the little thing in the back too, and it didn't mention that the the uh, Beautification Committee was there, but we were. Okay. And that uh, it was. I don't think there was anybody abstaining from it. There was a long discussion. Mm -hmm. So uh, everybody agreed, whether we wrote it down or not. Yeah. Okay. 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 All right. And Thank I will say it, 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 you, it did take the form of a workshop that evening. So I mean, I guess if, if for future, if we need to go ahead and have a formal meeting with beautification and have minutes to ratify well, I, that decision. Or I know there was a discrepancy in the past about a decision, and um, I just wanted to make sure that didn't happen again. No, this was unanimous as she spoke. It was a unanimous decision on this this purchase. Maybe yeah, on this purchase. I just have a question. Where are you going to put this one? It's going to be toward the southern end of Willow Creek Park, close to the dog park, a little further north or south from there. Okay. And that so there's a gap. We're trying to fill in the gaps now, so we're making our way down the park. Sure. And that won't interfere with the food truck park or anything? No. Okay. Good. For what it's worth, Mayor and Council, it's a big sucker. <laughs> <laughs> It is a big sucker. That's okay. <laughs> no, that's Technical awesome. term. Look Did we get a sneak preview? Yeah, look forward to seeing it. Absolutely. And one other thing we, that was brought up is nobody purchased anything last year. Right. So we, we had, you know, in our brains, you, we usually spend X amount. So right. let's double it and have a big one down there. So that's why it got a little pricey. That's okay. Right. Any other questions, Council? If not, I'll entertain a motion on item C. Yes, I move that uh, we accept item 4C on the consent agenda. All right. Second. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Excellent. Item E, action regarding approval of purchase of new hof soft hardware software for check payment processing. Kim Quinn. Thank you, Mayor and City Council. As you recall, there was a security breach back in April, and as a result, we had an aud a forensic audit. Um, the audit turned up turned out favorable and that there was no um, information that was leaked or was vulnerable um, but there were two areas that uh, were identified as possible vulnerabilities although there was nothing that happened through our end that caused it um, and this is one of the areas that we're trying to rectify since the um, since we since the data breach we have not been processing checks automatically with the system that we used to have knowing that that was a possibility that it was an area that we had a weakness in uh, so we've been doing it the old-fashioned way manually with checks sending the checks to the bank and it's not very efficient way it's not a very efficient use of time um, or resources and so this um, is a system that will replace the old system um, that will be secure and um, will allow us to be more efficient in processing checks. Any questions? I have one. Yes, sir. Uh, Kim, where did we come up with the name for the software? I mean, did the company that did the audit for us, did they suggest this brand or? No, they just identified the vulnerability. We worked with our uh, vendors that are compatible with our finance system and the utility billing supervisor um, asked around and talked to different cities who use the different softwares and this was the one that was identified as being um, able to meet our needs as well as um, be able to work with our finance system okay. any other questions on item e 
If not, I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, I would like to uh, make or progress the, the approval of the uh, software purchase at item uh, 4E in the consent agenda. Okay. Do I have a second? I have a second. Do I have a second? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Those opposed? Excellent. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Kim. Item number five, Police Chief Lee Howe will introduce a new police officer. This is very exciting. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Members, uh, it's my honor to, uh, to introduce you to uh, our latest uh, hire. Um, we, uh, you know, like the other two that were here a few months ago, um, Timothy Soto is a member of our community, so he has a more than just a, a stake in the community as a, as a police officer, but uh, he is also somebody who's going to be, you know, patrolling and serving uh, the community the community where he lives. Um, he also has family members that live here. So um, we're, we're proud to have him. And uh, he, he uh, put himself through uh, the police academy, uh, looking to hire on here. We kind of contacted him in the academy um, and uh, put the hard sell on him. But actually, I think he, he wouldn't have had it any other way to work anywhere but Saginaw. So we're proud to have. Uh, been able to get him in. So, Tim, if you'll stand up here, I'm going to uh, get you over the road here so we can get some good pictures of you. Uh, so, I'm going to do a ceremonial swearing in. So, if you'll raise your right hand. I state your name, Timothy Soto, do solemnly swear or affirm that I will faithfully execute the duties of a peace officer of the state of Texas and will, to the best of my ability, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution and the laws of the United States and of this state for help and guidance. I do. Thank you. Congratulations and welcome. To Mom out of the picture. Mayor, may I make a comment? Absolutely. Uh, Chief Howell, I really appreciate the fact that you bring your new recruits in and introduce them to the council. Um, I, I, it just makes me feel so much closer to the community because you're doing that. It's a great thing that you started. I'd like to see all the other departments follow your lead. You have a great example going here. So thank you so much for this. Thank you. Welcome. Congratulations. Welcome. Thank you. All right. Item number six, Farmer's Market, Christmas Market update for that. Community Link, Trey Harper. Welcome. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council. I'm Trey Harper, the Director of Development at Community Link. We've already talked a little about Christmas today, so it doesn't seem too early, though it seems early to me. Uh, it's been a great year so far. As you know, uh, 2020 was so successful that a neighboring city uh, entered an agreement with Community Link to manage their market. And so the Saginaw Farmers Market has become a flagship and example uh, for us to use because of its success. Several of our vendors have moved from the market to brick and mortar stores, which is uh, a huge testament to the success of the market. 
And there are a few things on the horizon that are new. Uh, we're getting new websites designed. Uh, when we started the market, the original websites were vendor focused out of necessity. Now we're looking at a visitor focused website. Um, and those are, uh, I should get the shell of that this week, so that's exciting. And we are proposing a Christmas mega market to accommodate some of our crafters, uh, and that would be December the 11th. Um, and then we're also going to be polling our vendors to see if there's interest in a year-round market, um, maybe except for the month of January. Um, but having a year-round market would be appealing, we think, to many of our vendors and to the community as well. Uh, before I continue with a few things that I have, I wanted to introduce, so you could see her face, uh, Whitney Berry is our new farmer's market coordinator who is solely focused on building upon the success of the market. And she's going to talk to you about two new programs that we have coming up. Okay, well, hi, everyone. I met some of you just at the market, so it's exciting to meet everybody. So, yeah, I'm the new farmer's market coordinator. Um, we have a couple new programs, well, one new program going, one we already have. Um, we have the SNAP program, which kind of sets us apart from other farmer's markets. So, if you're not familiar with SNAP, SNAP was kind of formerly known as Food Stamps. It's a supplemental nutrition assistance program, so that allows members of our community, maybe low income, no income, maybe they're on disability, whatever their story is, it makes the farmer's market a little bit more accessible to them. The best part of that is to say they have $20 they want to use of their SNAP benefits. We actually double that so they can get $40. That gives it even more incentive for them to come. We have that through a sponsorship with Medical City ER, so we're able to double their SNAP dollars for them. The new program we have I'm excited about um, especially is the POP program. So it's Power of Produce. It's going to focus around children. And we're hoping to um, get that going October 9th. And it's really an incentive program for children to make them a part of the process. So we'll have activities for them really involving healthy food, so vegetables, whatever, even with the farmers, just to show the process um, of the plants from seed to growing and then being at the farmer's market. They'll get tokens, $2 tokens, whatever it happens to be, so that they can actually purchase something at the farmer's market. I know when I was a kid, if I bought something or actually had to do with something, it was a really big deal. So that just empowers them to make healthy choices on their own. Yeah, so it's our new programs. <laughs> Yes, we have um, been working hard at recruiting farmers. The winter storm made some of that a little more challenging. Um, before, I'm sure there's some questions. I wanted to address some things that I've heard. Um, a popular rhetorical statement that I hear from the council is citizens are saying, uh, and so I'm going to kind of use these as saying council people are saying. Council people are saying that Community Link makes a lot of money out of this agreement. However, Community Link keeps this, these funds separate in another account. It doesn't go into the program of Community Link that most of you are familiar with. To date, uh, all that money sits in one account. Um, community Link decided that this was an important community piece for Saginaw and for our hungry neighbors, which is the mission and vision of Community Link. Um, again, we are the management team and responsible for the vendor relations. Um, so there's some that are concerned about vendors and waiting list. There is still a waiting list. We are in charge of that, though, and we're doing our best. Um, we're working on some better communication as well. Um, only two vendors have been completely denied. One was because of quality of product, and the other was because of um, negative comments on our social media. Uh, so we decided that they would not be welcome back uh, to our market. The reason many others um, are are on the waiting list is because of our goal is to feature food. It is a farmer's market, and it, so it's a food center program, uh, not a flea market. So the goal is food focused. Um, our Christmas market should address some of those on the waiting list, and that is the goal. Um, also, the farmer's market we are managing is becoming an outlet for, uh, the other farmer's market we're managing uh, is becoming an outlet for us to test out uh, new vendors. So Lake Worth, we're testing out, and if we really like them, they get invited to Saginaw. So uh, know that you're getting the best uh, choice there. Um, third, apparently there was some confusion around uh, the difference that the city of Saginaw is paying versus the city of Lake Worth. And um, hopefully this eases your mind, but Lake Worth is paying $285 more in their agreement. So you're getting the bargain there. And finally, um, apparently, and this is related to Community Link as a whole, uh, council people are saying they don't understand why Community Link has paid staff. Community Link is a fast-growing nonprofit that feeds hungry families and provides other resources in Northwest Tarrant County. In 2020, Community Link served over 27,000 families. More than half of them come from zip codes that encompass Saginaw. Without a staff team, Community Link would not be where it is today. Uh, much of that is due to Karen, who is behind me, our executive director. Uh, providing the basic needs at such a high level 
uh, requires a staff. Yes, we rely heavily on volunteers. Charlie is one of our faithful volunteers in our pantry going and picking up food. Uh, but when it comes to vision, administration, and finding financial support to feed hungry families, it requires paid professionals. Many of you are parts of similar organization, organizations who pay their leaders, churches is what I'm referring to. In 2020, 92% of all money spent at Community Link went to direct client services. Something uh, I hear often from the dais is, we like Community Link, but. And we all know that saying but in a sentence negates anything that's said before it. So the question is, do you support feeding hungry families at the scale, at this scale in your community? So if so, continue to stand alongside Community Link and hungry families. If so, stop by on a Monday, Tuesday, or Thursday and hop in and volunteer. Uh, some other cities have participated in that. And if so, set up a tour. I give uh, many a tour a week and just see what's happening uh, at 300 Belmont Street. A friend of mine always says, you can, can't see the community without seeing the church, and you can't see the church without seeing the community. And Community Link's work is to pull these things together, these two things, the church and the community. We simply ask that you help us do just that. Thank you all so much, and there's exciting days ahead. Are there any questions? Any questions, Council, for Trey yes. or, or Whitney? Yes. Mr. Beasley. So do you see any other cities um, requesting, requesting this service? Um, as so far as the it is, is becoming a popular item in most cities to have this amenity. Um, there are other cities that would be interested. Um, we won't take on more than two at this point. Okay. Um, and what do you mean by year around? You said. So year current, uh, last year we took a hiatus, kind of in the, what we would consider winter months. It's kind of relative in Texas, I know. But um, oh. mostly that was to regroup because of COVID. We opened in the middle of COVID, kind of see what we could improve. Um, now we're looking at not really stopping except for maybe the month of January and after the Christmas market. So, you know, like a month and a half's time. Okay. And have you thought about, like, I mean, so you're saying. We know that the farmer's market is geared towards farmers and food and right. things like that. And as far as for the, the other non -food side, items. the non-food <laughs> items, instead of them having to wait all the way to Christmas, <clears throat> what about Christmas in July? You know, that way we can sure. get two. There is a model that we could um, look at that another market uses is every fifth Saturday having um, a craft piece to it, a, a, a more... Um, protracted craft piece. We could look at something like that. Again, food is the focus and we want to kind of stick. And we have part of our agreement with the city is 60% food items, 40% non-food <coughs> items. So we try to stick to that. And when are these tours? Anytime. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll send you an email, Charles. Okay. Yeah. And the last thing, I just want to say thank you guys for what you're doing. I think it's, I think it's, I mean, I think this, not this last market, but the market before, and I think it was kind of small. I don't know why. Sure. You know, it didn't seem like there was a lot of vendors there. Vacation. Yeah, and then this <laughs> vacation. But I think you guys are doing an excellent job. Keep up the good work. Thank you all for all, with, all that you do. Thank you, Charles. Other questions, Council? I got one. Mr. Tucker? Have you all thought about putting something out in a flyer type thing, you know, one of these sure. type things that says that you take SNAP? Yeah, so we are working on the marketing of SNAP. Um, we are looking at doing it through people that sign people up for SNAP. So there's case managers who sign them up for SNAP. In fact, Community Link is about to ha uh, just hire a case manager on staff, and she will be helping us uh, promote that a bit more. Um, so the idea of, of farmer's markets can seem um, unattainable for some, just the name, uh, not as approachable as like a grocery store, obviously. Uh, but we've created a system that allows, hopefully, a uh, great amount of dignity uh, in using SNAP at our market. So we are trying to figure that out, uh, how to best promote that. We're using models from other markets uh, that do this. But, um, yeah, does that answer your question, sir? That's all I have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Council? Cindy? Yeah. Uh, much like Gabe, I grew up on a farm, and I, I just have – a real affection for fresh, fresh produce, you know, and I, I love having that available. Um, I, I know that uh, there's also a lot of people that have like craft soaps and things like that, um, and it's it's good to have them there as well. You know, sure. anything natural is always really good. But uh, again, I still hear a lot of people, you know, well, I don't even apply because you know I can't get in. There's a long waiting list, um, you know, because 
they have products and things to sell, not necessarily food all the time, but uh, I didn't know if you considered maybe having some booths set up where people could rotate out, come in maybe, you know, twice a year and sell their products. Um, I know the senior citizens, because of COVID, have lost, what, three of their craft fairs? And, uh, you know, allow the seniors to come in a couple times a year, set up a booth. Um, one of the other things I noticed at uh, a recent <clears throat> farmer's market that I went to is the heat and the wind and things like that. And I didn't know if we had a first aid station set up. And I talked with Paul Falegi, who's our CERT president, about maybe CERT having a a rehab station or a first aid station set up out there. Uh, what a great community service for CERT, as well as you know a service to offer to the community. Yeah, we actually had someone pass out last season. So yeah. yeah. So um, you know that was one of the things that I thought we could mention to you. Sure. Um, and by the way, Miss Barry, is that your name? Yeah. Welcome. So yeah. glad to have you here. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm excited about the programs that you propose. So I can't wait to see them. Uh, especially the pop, you know, I know the kids are going to love that. Uh, your Christmas mega market. Yeah. market. Um, how many people are you going to open up that to, and are you going to charge for booths and things? Or? We will charge for booths, just as basic quality control, um, just so we aren't a flea market. Um, so there will be a standard there, and a minimal charge is, is 20 bucks. Um, okay. And so we won't limit... The numbers last year we weren't going to limit numbers and we were going to kind of flood the fields out there with mm -hmm. vendors as we need so yeah yeah i mean yeah i mean as many as we want to but yeah that has good points and bad points but uh you know i think uh it would also be a great opportunity to look at uh potential new vendors because i know sure. some of these guys have been here for a couple of years and i watch them and you know business is kind of slow for them don't want to hurt them but at the same time a lot of selling out too. Yeah. Last Saturday at Saginaw was a sellout Saturday for most everybody. Mm -hmm. What date is the Christmas market? The 11th. Okay. And so, anyway. If it falls on a normal Saturday, it'll probably be an extended hour. So. I see. Okay. But anyway, like I said, you know, a, a rotating booth for, you know, community organizations and seniors or people who want to sell their wares. Um, or so, a couple of recommendations that I have, and then, you know, again, CERT. Uh, having them out there to help with the community. Sure. Great. Okay. Thank you. Other questions? Mary? Um, I just wanted to, you know, acknowledge the good work that you're doing, and we're so fortunate to have you in Saginaw, and it's a new, you know, what, is this the third year not counting COVID? I mean, no, it's... We're, so we, the market? Yeah. We're in our second season. Yeah, so, I mean, it's new. You're yeah. You're improving all the time, and... I really appreciate what you're doing, and I'm, you know, one of my daughters came from another city, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, I'm, I'm real proud of what you're doing. That's a good point, Mary, actually, about coming from another city. Uh, one thing we're going to, we're working on together is getting better data to see how much money is made at a market so we can tell you how much uh, community impact that's having. <clears throat> we haven't been gathering that, um, and we're putting in some processes with our vendors to kind of look at that information as well. Sure, go ahead. You had talked one time about uh, we had a waiting list and the, the possible need to expand, but we never heard anything more on that. You know, how much space are we looking at? What's your waiting list like? Yeah. Uh, if you I have people that don't show up. waiting list a couple of times, I believe, to Gabe and then to y'all. Uh, we never, Gabe. We never um, got it, or I never got it. Okay. So, um, but I was I, just kind of curious. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would love to vote on uh, expanding the market. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, you know I'd, I'd like to see so more the, yeah. people out there. Sure. You know, I see Keller. They have, like, 60 vendors, and it's like, yeah. wow. We Not got on space. a regular Saturday. That's unusual. But. We got space. We could, yeah. we could put, We actually you know, have mostly the same vendors. They 40. Duplicate, yeah, and I'd like to see, you know, a little bit of rotation in that as well. Well, that's not best practice, and so we, we so. look at best practice for farmers' markets, and the best practice is if you well, have faithful vendors, to stick them in there and keep them there. Until, I mean, the consumer decides if they need to be there or not, I guess. Right. You know, and I miss places like uh, what, Texas Mushroom, Texas Fungus. Yeah, we're working on a, a new fungi yeah. person. <laughs> 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 yeah, because I bought some of their stuff, and then, you know, people was like, well, I want that, and then right. they never showed back up. So I know. Yeah. Fingers crossed. I've been talking to mushroom vendors. So <laughs> okay. 
All right, thanks. One thing Ms. you can do for me, tell the kettle corn guy he's got me addicted to that stuff. <laughs> That's a good point too, Charlie. The food truck piece helps the market, and the market helps the food truck piece. Right. It's been really uh, great working with Vicky on that project. Dog anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Mayor. I, I, yeah, Gabe, go yeah ahead. just one uh, quick comment. So the Parks Board, uh, in the past couple months, is uh, talking about potential for the future at the southern end of Willow Creek Park. You'll recall we uh, purchased um, adjacent property between the market and the water storage tanks there. So. There's certainly a lot of demand from patrons and vendors. Um, you know, adding another pavilion is something that may be recommended to you in the future to expand the market, keep it going. I know Community Link would, you know, like as large of a pallet, I'm sure, uh, as possible to keep going. So those talks are uh, being had by the Park Support. Excellent. Thank you. Council, other questions, comments? Well, thank you guys. I really thank appreciate you. it. Next time, I hope it's more Whitney and less Trey, but uh, right. I think it was very good, though. I appreciate it. Passing the baton. <laughs> no, thank you all for everything. All right. Item number seven, consideration action regarding authorization of contract with PGAL Architects for Library and Senior Citizen. For that, Chief Lee Howe. Thank you, Mayor. Well, this is another exciting item to bring to you. Uh, back in May, uh, there was a Pretty extensive process begun to select architectural services for the library and senior center projects. Um, there were four, four uh, very qualified firms in the area that were invited to respond to uh, requests for qualifications. Um, we had a, the selection committee uh, met on a number of occasions. We uh, reviewed the portfolio submitted by all those four firms and uh, did some uh, extensive interviewing with all four firms in the process. We also uh, conducted some reference checks uh, of previous uh, cities, uh, cities where there are current or previous uh, projects by, all, by some of these firms, and uh, we uh, did scoring. Uh, every member of the committee uh, scored all of them, and PGAL was a clear number one after all that process. Uh, the members of the selection committee were uh, Council Member Charles Beasley and Patrick Farr, uh, library board members Rick Russell and Belinda Henson, and of course uh, staff members Ellen Ritchie and Keith Reinhardt and myself. Um, so the, the selection was done uh, on the, based on the criteria in the RFQ and um, we bring to you tonight uh, uh, in the backup material um, on the agenda on the agenda backup material I've provided the contract and all the supporting documents that go with that and um, we would uh, as a consensus of the selection committee we would recommend that you approve contract with PGAL and I'll be glad to answer any questions we have Council. We also have um, I'm sorry uh, you, uh, we have uh, Principal Architect Jeff Bulla and our project manager from PGAL for our projects, Michelle Elbers, here. You can also answer any questions. Mm -hmm. Can I get the ranking on how that went? Sure, I'm, I'll be glad to provide it for you. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just like to know how it's presented and how it got ranked. Okay. okay. Council, other questions? Do you have anything to present or are you all just here to answer questions? I think they're just here to answer questions. Yeah. I do. Thank you, Cindy. <laughs> um, I have a few comments, and I'd like to thank the committee for all their hard work. You did a great job. Um, I was impressed by the fact that you had a grading system, you know, that was objective, and, you know, you came up with the best uh, quality person. I'm sure they would have all been great, but... <laughs> Um, Modestly, Mr. Beasy was on the committee as well. So I was in, I know it was very, a lot of work, and I, I really appreciate everything you did. Um, I would love to see some public art included in both of these buildings. And I was looking in the 
background information, the expectations and duties, et cetera, the 68-page document. <laughs> and there were two places that I found that could be used to, to include that type of public art. One was a plaza and other amenities. That kind of lays the groundwork for something like that. And then farther on down, I think page 15 or 16, there was a list of, here are some things that we can do if you want us to. And one of those was to uh, coordinate with an art group or some, you know, to get some different ideas or whatever, but not to choose an artist or, so I guess my question, and I don't know who should answer this, is if we have enough money in the budget to, to have some public art, I would like it for both buildings. And I don't know if it would be better to put that, include that in this contract somewhere where it would be expected or whether we should just see if we uh, come in under budget. And if so, then does the city want to just handle that themselves? So I don't know the best way to do it, and I, I don't know how to ensure that we will be able to have some public art. Is that a question for Chief Howell, maybe? Yeah, yeah certainly. That, um, so the, the process has just started on, you know, I mean, we're, we're in the, in the uh, early stages of the, of the design, and so there will be a series of meetings with uh, the library board and with the senior center uh, uh, members and uh, an architect firm and other staff people and other citizens to try to determine what all it, the the community would like to have in the building and around the complex so certainly I'm sure that's something that will be addressed council other questions I know we um, and this is we're going to get a construction manager for this so that will flow at some point um, can we just talk about real top level timing, Chief? Um, what we're thinking on this these projects, as far um, as planning, and then yes, I think that this phase of the, the design phase uh, through throughout it's uh, is you know I would suspect it will take about a year to to complete, um, and then probably another ten twelve months construction depending on um, the weather. And you know unforeseen issues. And so we'll, we will build, we will design and build both facilities currently, right? Side by side, same time, same firm. Yes. Although, so so they're they're separated by bond um, within the bond package. However, it's planned to put to locate both facilities and design them and build them at the same time. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, right across the street here. So. So I'm thinking, and, and again, I'm a, I'm a simple guy, so I'm thinking in my head with a little little math. We're in 21, so you're talking a year and a year, so in 23 sometimes we could have some nice, pretty new buildings to walk into? Well, that's entirely possible. Roughly? I won't hold you to that. I'm just trying to understand. So, and this, everybody remembers, you know, this is a big number, a lot of money, but this is, of course, what the citizens voted for. This is directly from that bond package. Uh, so we are enacting the wishes of the citizenry that uh, they voted on. Uh, so that will include the design work, which is phase one, and then construction, of course, phase two. So that's sort of how it works. Um, other questions? Yes, Cindy. Uh, hi, Jeff. It's good to see you again. You and I had talked uh, several months ago about the possibility of moving the senior citizen center to the back of the property. Is that still an option? I know. <laughs> Good evening, Mayor, Council Member. Um, my name is Jeff Bola. I'm a principal with PGAL. So, yes, Council Member uh, Big Horse, I absolutely remember our conversations. And you know, the the original sketch that that was done is just a concept. Right. It's, we're starting from scratch. We have an outstanding local uh, landscape and civil engineering firm um, here on our team, and that we will integrate them into the design process as we begin to look at all of that. Take take input from stakeholders, from the community. Um, you know, from you all and, and really try to solve it because 
It's a, it's, a, it's a great site, a great program, and the outdoor spaces are critical to both facilities. Yes. And, and not only to each facility, but to the op opportunities like a plaza or something in mm -hmm. sculpture uh, to the community as a whole. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, and the reason I'm asking is because when the bond information was presented, they saw the Senior Citizen Center at the front. Mm -hmm. Several seniors that I spoke to said, I do not want to be on the street and I do not want to be on display. Okay. So they wanted you know, well, kind we, of in the back. So Definitely provided in our services is stakeholder and public engagement with the seniors. So mm -hmm. they're, they're going to absolutely get an opportunity to express any, anything they wish to us. And we'll okay. absolutely take that into consideration you know, with the city's project team. Okay, excellent. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you sir. Any other questions? Council, thank you, sir. Thank you, Jeff. Appreciate that. All right. So, uh, any other questions? Anything else to add, Chief? Uh, if not, I will entertain a motion. Mayor, I move that we. Let me move one again. <coughs> Mayor, I move that we. I don't know who's this. Okay. We're authorizing a contract. Mayor, I move that we authorize a contract with, with PGAL Architects for the Library and Center Center Senior. Citizen Center Design. Right. Have a second. Okay. All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed. Excellent. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Chief. <laughs> Thank you. Good work. Let's let's get moving forward. Item number eight: Consideration action on a proposal from Network Cabling Services to upgrade AV equipment in the City Council Chambers. Assistant City Manager Dolph Johnson. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. Mayor and Council, you are aware we've had a lot of uh, issues, reliability and dependability issues with the audiovisual system in this building, in particular in this council chamber. So uh, we had uh, NCS come out and do a, an evaluation of our system and make some recommendations on uh, what they saw needed to be upgraded, uh, including adding back our electronic voting system, which has been disabled for several years now. So. Uh, they did that assessment and came back with the proposal that you have in your packet tonight with the recommended improvements. Uh, we were able to get a demo of the voting system uh, brought out for us to take a look at, and the mayor just happened to be here that day and, and got a chance to look at that. And It's easy enough that I can use it. I'm confident y'all can as well. So um, NCS is a vendor that's on the state uh, contract uh, vendor system excuse me, a purchasing co-op by board. We're a member of that. So uh, they've also been instrumental in working with Chief Spears on the new fire station project for cabling and the AV systems are going into that building. So uh, our IT director couldn't be here tonight, unfortunately. If y'all have any technical questions about all this stuff that's in the proposal and you're relying on me, you're out of luck because I don't know. He <laughs> that's what we pay him for. Uh, but he did review this and uh, thinks that the upgrades that they recommended are reasonable and the cost is as well. So uh, the total cost of the system upgrade is $54,855.20. Funds are available in the current year's budget uh, through the general fund budget through cost savings and uh, increases in our sales tax revenue. So uh, if you don't have any questions, uh, staff recommends approval of the agreement. Thank you, Doc. Questions? Council? Yes, Mayor Copeland? Um, do we have any idea how long the upgrade will take for them to finish? No, I don't, but I wouldn't anticipate it taking very long. And then would it interfere with the streaming of the city council meetings while no. they're doing? Okay. No. And is there any connection, like do any of the upgrades have anything to do with the streaming system? No. Okay. So they're not at all connected. Okay, that's all I needed. Thank you. Council, other questions? Councilmember Big Horse? Uh, was this one of the items that we approved in our budget for the 21 22? No, ma'am. Fiscal year? Okay. This Thank will be you. out of this year's current budget. Oh, in, in this year's? This year's okay. budget. Okay. Other questions? And I have to take some of the blame for this. I've been complaining about this system for several years, so. My apologies, but I appreciate Dolph looking into it and finding a solution. So I, I feel it's, I don't know, it's 2020 when I feel silly raising my hand to vote when there's other great technology. It works. I understand it works. It's legal, but there's a lot of technology out there, and I appreciate us stepping in the 21st century. Other questions, Council? It's just a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> I know. 
If no other questions, I'll entertain a motion. May I make a motion that we approve the network catering services to upgrade our city council chambers? Okay. Cindy, second. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Oh, excellent. Thank you, Doll. Thanks, sir. Appreciate it. All right. So, hey, that's everything. Cool. All right. So, uh, item nine, executive session, pursuant to Texas Government Code 551.087. Deliberation regarding economic development negotiations. We will adjourn, uh, go into executive session at 6.45. We will return to adjourn the meeting.
something, if there's something we can. Okay. All right, we got everybody. So at 7.02, we're back in session. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. I move. Make a motion to adjourn. Cindy, second. Charlie, second. All those in favor? 702, we're out of here. Thanks, guys.